Hello, welcome everybody. This is Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman with the final video on the topic of Carlsbad structure and in general the topic of point structures. And after this video, we'll move on to other topics, although those videos will come later on. And this now, as promised, we're going to be looking at different types of Carlsbad structures which occur sometimes reversed. So here's the first example. This game was played in a rapid tournament between Grandmaster Roman Dinjihashvili, who lives in the United States now, against world champion Anatoly Karp of 1998. And this game started with e4, c6. And here we got a Karakon exchange variation, which was made popular by Grandmaster world champion Robert Fischer. And the idea is just simple to develop. And now notice how we have a reversed Carlsbad structure. We have this pawn chain like this. And soon black will also play e6 at some point and we'll basically get exactly like the Carlsbad structure. So let's see how black plays this position. So black plays bishop g4, he wants to get the bishop out when he gets a chance. Likewise, white plays bishop g5 here. Here bishop g4 is played. Queen b3, queen c8, knight d2, e6, knight f3, bishop e7, castles, castles. Perhaps bishop h5 is also interesting. So castles was played. And now rook a1. So perhaps queen c2 is a little bit more accurate, which was played in another game that we'll get a chance to see soon. In this game, rook a1 was played. And now first step is to trade off this bishop, because that's usually not the best piece for black, the bishop on c8, so he wants to trade it off for the good bishop on d3. And white trades off, and black plays bishop g6. So, for now, nothing special is happening. A couple of pieces get traded off. But now, after queen d1, it's clear that white's the one gonna try to attack on the king's side, black's gonna try to attack on the queen's side. So, b5 was played. Typical minority attack. Rook e3, a5, h4. And white's attacking on the king's side. So you see everything is just like in the Carlsbad structure, queen's gamma decline, but reversed. b4, g4, a4, h5, a3. And now we get a race, but actually black turns out to be ahead in the race in this game. cb, and now ab is a little bit more accurate. Maybe bishop takes b4 was played, h6, rook e8, hg, knight d7. Anyway, it was a rapid game. And now BA perhaps was more accurate. To BA would be less clear. Rook B3 was played. Bishop wants to go to defense for the king's side anyway. Rook C3. Queen B7. Rook C7. Queen B5. B3. And now black gets rid of this dangerous piece. And now he starts using the queen. And black tries to trade off the active piece. And now, okay, he eliminates the pawn and basically. From here on, black's completely winning because there's no more attack and black's just up a pawn and with a better game. And the rest of the game was more or less a mop-up. Just uh, trying to stop some threats. And okay, now it's desperation because queen takes f2 is a threat. And here white just resigned. So this is an example of where the minority attack was successful for black. Now let's look at an opposite example. And this game was played between Grandmaster Walter Brown and... Uh, Grandmaster Bent Larson, and that was when Bent Larson was at his peak, basically playing the match against Fischer and so on, one of the best Western players in the world. Brown played e4, and now once again we'll get the same kind of Karakhan, and uh, Queen c8, and everything is the same here, but now White played earlier knight e5, and Queen c2. And now that's a big difference, because now if we take here, of course, knight takes e5, he's going to take d. That's the whole point. So that's why perhaps black should have taken here. Or he should have played bishop h5. But the way he played, he played bishop g6 and he traded the knight for the bishop. But now it turns out this is a good version for white. Why? Because after knight f3, white remains with a strong bishop. And white has a two bishop advantage, which is quite pleasant. And as you'll see, it's actually, this position might be roughly equal, but I would prefer white still. I think from a practical standard point of view, white is better. Knight h5 was played, bishop e3, queen c7, trying to go knight f4. 
g3 stopping black's activity. Rook c8, queen e2. And also because this bishop on d3 is alive, that's also rem important. Remember the bishop on d6? Well, here we have this bishop on d3, which basically puts a hamper on black's potential minority attack. So black played a6, but rook a1. And again, b5 can be answered with a4 or maybe just a3. And again, it's going to be hard to get anything going very quickly. So rook e8, bishop just goes back to c1, where it doesn't interfere with the e-file. So the really the only purpose of going bishop e3 was to make sure that you, you're able to activate the rook from a1. Knight goes back to f6 since it doesn't do anything on h5. And now knight g5. And already white wants to play f4 and start advancing on the king's side. Bishop d6, f4. Knight d7, knight back to f3. Knight f8, knight e5. So you see how slowly but surely white's improving his position. Knight e7, king g2. f6, knight f3. But now the e6 square is kind of weak. And the g6 pawn could also be at some point a target. With ideas like h4 and so on. So finally black tries to play rook b8. Maybe trying to get the minority attack eventually. But it turns out not to be very effective because it's easily stopped. And it's way too slow. And already white's getting a lot of pressure on the king's side. Here they repeated moves a couple of times. But now white breaks through first. Cb, ab, a4. Queen takes a4, knight h4. And uh, this works tactically because white breaks through faster. Takes, takes. And now the h file is opened up. And now white breaks through with f5. So as you could see, white just is much quicker. And now queen f7 is a threat. And then basically the rest of it is a mop up. And uh, white basically won. The next game I want to show you is the game between two world champions, Petrojan and Botvinnik. And this game was back from um, 1963 in their world championship match. Now Petrosian did win the world championship match, but in this game Botvinnik got the better of it. And this game started with a Nimzo Indian. And after Queen C2 Nimzo, he played D5. C, D, E, D. Bishop G5. H6. Bishop takes F6. Queen takes f6. Of course, bishop h4 is also one of the main moves. But bishop takes f6 was played. Queen takes f6. a3. And now bishop a5 is not so effective because of b4. And e3. So the bishop is misplaced on b6. So that's why he takes, takes, and goes c6. So now we get, again, typical Carl's butt structure from a different opening. But now two pieces are traded. e3. Castles, knight e2, rook e8, good move. And now white should probably play a move like knight c1 with the idea of trying to get a knight to d3. Where it tries to look at the c5 square and then allows nice comfortable development. Instead he played knight g3, seemingly everything is normal, you know, just protecting the king's side, going bishop d3, castles. But it turns out that it runs into a very nasty plan. Simply g6 followed by h5. And now the knight can really be bothered really badly on g3. And again, black has this typical king's side pressure. So white should still play bishop d3. And after h5, knight e2, with the idea of before a4, he still is probably okay, even though he lost the tempo. But he played f3. And after h5, bishop e2, knight d7. Already white is dealing with some weaknesses. King f2 h4, knight f1. Seems like white's still okay, but in fact, this position is already much easier to play for black. Knight f8, knight d2, rook e7, rook e1, bishop f5. And yeah, black's basically getting very comfortable development, whereas white's actually having to deal with some weaknesses, and in the future his king is a little bit squeezed. So... And now white should play knight f1 or b4, but he played h3, which is also a weakening move. Really weakens the g3 square and really was uncalled for, because h3 wasn't really a threat anyway. Rook a8, knight f1, knight e6. And now the knight should go to g5. Instead, he goes to g7 with the idea to try to go to h5 and then going to g3. 
rook ad1, knight h5, rook c1, queen d6, rook c3, knight g3. And now maybe knight takes g3 was better choice. But it's still tough. I think knight g7 was fine, actually. I think black played this game really well. King g1, knight back to h5, bishop d1, rook e6, queen f2, queen e7, just keeping the pressure. And maybe f4 was better now with bishop b3, and now g5. And again, as you could see, white's not having very much play on the queen side. And that's why black can play for long-term pressure on the king side. We've seen this before. And now white should probably at some point create counterplay, not defend passively. So something like e4, knight f4, queen d2, and might still be okay after, let's say, rook c3. Using the fact that the pawn on d5 is spinned. So instead he went bishop d1, bishop g6, and uh, g4. But now after takes, takes, knight f4, strong move. Black's able to break through. With the idea of c5, c4, and now... Black controls a d3 square and and really dominating the game. And here, white resigned because he's going to be losing a piece on c2 and then going to be just down a piece on end game. This game, finally, I wanted to show you some ideas where we actually can get uh, Carlsbad structures even from an opening like the Grunfeld. Now you think, how in the world an opening like the Grunfeld? But this is good to know. If you play the Grunfeld as black, something like this is good to know. Because let's say somebody plays a bishop g5 line and you want to play knight e4. And they take and then they go for this line as white. It's good to know what to do as black if they play like this. So as you could see, you can even get structures like this. Even from a Grunfeld. Now the bishop's on g7, but it doesn't matter. The pawn structure after black plays c6 or something, still going to be the same. Where the c pawn is traded off for the e pawn. E3, castles, bishop e2, c6, castles, bishop e6, rook c1, knight d7, knight a4, f5. So notice how Smyslov is developing in a very harmonious way, where all his pieces are pretty much perfectly placed. And Smyslov was well known for, you know, basically playing with a lot of harmony in his games. He was also a singer and probably carried over to chess, or maybe it was the other way around. But anyway... It's good to learn from his games. So instead, queen b3 maybe was better to be played, but white played g3, which is kind of weakening, and now after g5 and f4, black actually just gets a very nice attack. So once again, white's late with, with his Carlsbad structure play, and uh, black just basically uses all his pieces to the maximum and uh, just wins a really nice game. Now, this d4 pawn actually becomes a weakness, and uh, not only that, black also has initiative on the king side. And then finally c5 at the right moment, breaking through. You cannot take with the pawn because of bishop takes c3. Rook's hanging, so you had to go rook e1. Rook takes c5 didn't help either because after takes, 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 this hangs in the end. So you had to go rook e1, queen h6, knight e5. But this is lost and uh, white just resigned. Because after cd, you would go there, there, and rook f1, followed by rook f2, and takes, 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 queen f6, winning the rook, and black's going to be up a queen for a rook. However, there is also a game Petrosian against Krogios, which shows that there could be some dangers for the black side as well. And uh, again, we get a similar opening. And uh, white played bishop d3 here. And here black played knight c6, and again, c6 probably should be played, and black should play the same way as in the Smyslov game, but the bishop on d3 is better placed, because in some cases if f5, white can play maybe knight e2. But he played knight c6, black did, and after castles he wanted to play knight e7, with the idea to try to trade off the bishops. But in this case it doesn't work as well with the bishop on g7. And as you could see, black's actually trying to play without c6. Delaying c6 for too long can sometimes also be bad. And um, I'll ask you guys why. What's the move white can now play, which could give blacks a little bit of a headache? So if you need more time, keep your videos paused. The move is simply b5. 
And now c6 will always be taken and Black's going to be end up with this weakness and Black's attack is very slow. Obviously Black focused only on trading off pieces and in general it was not a good idea because he had two bishop advantage. He had attacking chances and he should have focused on playing c6 and a6 so that if a4 b5 he can play cb a b a5 or something with c5 some kind of counterplay. But here he just left himself with no counterplay and even the bishop on g7. He's not able to use it to the maximum effect. And it will still now be needed time to transfer it somewhere like d6. So after b5, queen d6, queen b3, knight e7. Now black basically has to play passively. And after black played some more inaccurate moves, white just got a really nice game. There's not going to be much of an attack anymore. And clearly white's getting his pieces exactly where he, they belong. And now he got the knight to c5, and now black has to deal with these two weaknesses. So as you can see, if you misplay the Grunfeld, if you misplay a Carlsbad structure, even if it arises from another opening, bad things like this can happen. You could still get into the same kind of trouble as in the regular Queen's Gambit decline. So you don't want to say, oh, I play other openings, I don't need to know this. You know, you always need to know typical ideas because you never know where they can arise. Rook a8, knight b7. And white won this pawn. So first stopping any counterplay, but then he just won this pawn. And okay, black has some desperate counterplay, but of course it's not serious. White's gonna trade queens and um, takes takes g4. Very nice idea. Now the queen on e4 really doesn't do much. Black tried to trade, take this pawn, but after a move like queen d2, okay, for now black got his pawn back, but now this king is gonna be also very weak. And white's just way too active. And the d5 pawn also falls. And now materials only have a pawn for white, but look at the bad king for black. So rook f8, knight f3, king h8, rook c7, a6, and the peace activity makes the difference here. And black just resigned here because knight f5 is coming, and uh, there's simply not going to be any defense from a mating attack. So as you could see, yeah, it's important to know Carlsbad structures no matter what opening you play because you never know when it can arise. And it's very important to know these typical themes, typical ideas from either color. So that's why I really wanted to do a lot on this topic and really go through it in depth. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed these pawn structure videos and the Carlsbad structure videos. And until next time, this is Grandmaster Alexander Landerman signing off. Thanks everybody for watching.